Teams across the NHL are opting out of wearing their pride jerseys, but the Seattle Kraken, not one of them. Let's talk about tonight's game day as we take on the Dallas Stars once again, talking about it all on Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Erica L. Ayala, your host of Locked on Kraken, coming to you this Monday evening, a couple of hours before the puck drops on our second matchup in three days against the Dallas Stars. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine. We are a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, which, of course, is free and available to you always. The Seattle Kraken got a point the last time we played Dallas. Now, you know, it's tough to say no to a point. We've been talking about this. We want to get points. That being said, you feel for the guys that they couldn't get this one done. Uh, They couldn't get the win. Crawling from behind just wasn't meant to be. Let's quickly go over Saturday's game. We'll do a quick recap here for you. So 4-3 overtime victory for the Dallas Stars. You can see the face-off percentage. They won there. They got a pretty good goal off of a, a face-off win. Shots were in favor of the Seattle Kraken. You see that we got it done once on the power play and kept them off of the score sheet on the power play. It was Oliver Bjorkstrand. With the power play goal. Oh, it was beautiful. Let's take a look at Oettinger's numbers. 903 save percentage. Pushed aside 28 of 31 shots. It was Philip Grubauer in net. Save percentage 840. 21 saves, 25 shots faced. Um, The first goal against was brutal. Um, it was a juicy rebound and the Seattle Kraken, it was actually Justin Schultz who, um, was pushed up a little high, didn't track back to keep the back door closed. And that was the first goal for the Dallas stars. Now, uh, Beneers, I think that they officially credited the goal to, uh, Everly, but Beneers was right there as well. Um, th- there was no score in the first period. Everything got going in the second period. And um, it was a, technically Everly's goal, but Veneers was right there. He celebrated like he got it. So I don't know. Score sheet says it was Ebbs. Um, but then you see that Mason Marchman scores straight away for um, Dallas to give them um, a 2 one lead. In the third period, Donato Bjorkstrand. So game time goal, Donato. Uh, uh, take to take the lead, Bjorkstrand. You love to see it. And then with a minute 10 left in the game, the Seattle Kraken were scrambling and we give up a goal with a minute 10 um, left in regulation. That's tough. We had to battle back, and we're going to look at natural stat trick and the, the flow chart of the game. But a minute, a minute 10. Ugh. Ugh. And then to boot, we had possession. Uh, Ryan Donato was asked about this after the game. Had possession for a good majority of overtime. We had been talking about how the Seattle Kraken were trending upward when it came to overtime. And then just snapped that streak. Couldn't get it done in overtime. It was a bad giveaway. Uh, I believe it was Schwartzy along the boards. He did try to battle for the puck back, did not win. And then some guy named Domi, who, um, you know, not my favorite hockey player ever, but uh, or favorite person ever, I should say, made a good pass. 
and connected. It was really interesting. I listened to Locked on NHL earlier today, and so our host from Locked on Stars was talking about this being a character win for Dallas because they did have to battle. I wanted to talk and take you over to Natural Stat Trick because you can see the ebbs and flows of this game here for Dallas, um, but in the ways that it favored Seattle. So this is Corsi in all scenarios, but you see that early on Seattle really had things going. Then late in the first period and going into the second, the Dallas Stars get some momentum, but Seattle's bouncing back. Then in the third, late in the third, the Seattle Kraken get that momentum, game tying goal, uh, goal to take the lead, and then just at that end there, it drops to zeros because we give up the um, we give up the goal. And again, you see here, this is the overtime line. That's what Donato was talking about, is that we had a lot of momentum, had a lot of possession in overtime, but Dallas scores. So at the end of the day, you know, this is just a game that Seattle is going to want back, but they get another chance tonight. So coming up next, let's take a look at tonight's game. We didn't really do a, a proper recap for the Dallas game. It was on a Saturday. So let's go over some numbers, what we need to know. Then we're going to keep up with what's happening throughout the NHL because getting a win against Dallas would put Seattle in a good position in a lot of different ways. Overall, I keep saying it, just have to get points. So let's talk about that coming up on Locked on Kraken. This episode of Locked on Kraken is brought to you by Athletic Greens. So this is something that I like to use a lot, especially when I am traveling, because in one scoop and eight ounces of water, I'm getting 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Now, this is much better than spending like $100 a day on multiple vitamins and supplements. You can change your Java habits. Uh, and for about $3 a day, you're spending the same on this, which again, gives you those high quality nutrients that you need to revitalize and restore and recover your body. And you can take it with you on the road as I often do. So to make things easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a one free, a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D for free and also free uh, five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is get go to athleticgreens.com backslash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com backslash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Coming back here, want to talk more about this game, game day against the Dallas Stars. So we talked a little bit about the game on Saturday. The matchup is the same. I like uh, what we heard from Wenberg, and if you saw the graphic for this episode, same opponent, new game. Same opponent, new game. That's what the mentality is. Now, it's not the same lineup. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you that Dave Haxtell is getting more and more testy about um, reporters asking about the lineup before the game. So he didn't give us the lineups. We do know, though, that it will be Martin Jones in net. Some numbers, last 10, 6-3-1 and one is Dallas. We're 5-4-1. and one. So we want to stay in that win column get a win today, get two points outright. Power play opportunities. We did get a power play goal, but we're 21st over, overall at a 20.2% clip, 23% for the stars. And you see just a nominal improvement, but that gets them in the top 10 in the league. Their penalty kill, 83.1% clip, clip, third overall. We're at a 75.3. So we held them off. On Saturday, we want to do the same tonight. Face-offs, you see here, we are 32nd in the league, 45.3% clip. And I mentioned earlier in the top segment that we did give up a chance by losing a face-off opportunity. Want to clean up their uh, goaltending. Oettinger started, not sure if we'll see him again, but 
we know we'll have Martin Jones with an 890 save percentage. He's got three shutouts, 24, 10, and three is his overall record. He's giving up just under three goals per game. That's his goal against average. So very curious to see if we see any other changes. We've been getting questions a lot about Eberly. He's kind of nursing an injury, but who isn't at this time of the season? I thought it was interesting, though, that the three uh, essentials for this game per, I believe it was Bob Condor who wrote the three game essentials. Let's just doble check here. Uh, yeah, it's Bob Condor. So talking a little bit about the net front presence, I mentioned this when it came to Donnie Boy. And if you watch that goal back, what Ryan Donato does extremely well, almost like he's a basketball player, is he crouches really low and he gets deep into his squat. So as Dallas is trying to push him out of right in front of the crease, they can't move him. They cannot move him. And then that puck comes in, and he talked about this in the post game, but you know, that wasn't a pass intended for him. It wasn't a shot in by him initially, but by creating that net front presence, similarly to Eberly and Beneers earlier, which again, Beneers thought he got the goal. They give the credit to Eberly, but who knows? Um, that was something that the Seattle Kraken talked about going into the second period and that they really needed to hunker down on in the third period. So that was missing early on, even though they had a little bit more possession according to the flow chart, uh, the, the game flow chart. So I love that. Gritty goals. We can't be afraid to get gritty goals. And who's who better than Ryan Donato? I don't know anyone. I'm not sure I know anyone better than Donato and Beneers to get gritty goals. But they can also give you finesse goals. I mean, you know I'm going to already say it. I want to see Ryan Donato in the lineup as much as possible. But we shall see. Um Jones gets the start. I think this is good. Give Gruby some rest. Don't think he was the big issue. Um, I didn't really see any goals, unlike the last game that we talked about last week. I really didn't see anything where he made some errors. I think it was defensive errors and keeping allowing Dallas to keep us hemmed in a little bit too much. That was more of what I saw. So I don't think this is a, a thing where it's Philip Grubauer had a bad game, so you give Jones, you play the same opponent, you give another look. I also talked last week that it might be time, especially with the losses starting to pile up. We got to get back into the win column. We did get a point, but I'd like to see us get back into the win column, so we'll see. And I do think Jonesy has some stuff to prove, but we'll talk about all of that. And I teased it at the top. But, oh, baby, let's take a look at these pride jerseys. I'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. Locked on Kraken is brought to you by Built Bar. Now, I told you about Athletic Greens, but if you want something delicious, tasty, and that you don't even need water for, you're going to want to go with a Built Bar because it's 100% covered in chocolate, but you are getting 130 calories, four, only 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein in every bar. Now they also taste delicious. They come in all kinds of cool flavors, coconut puff, uh, brownie batter, brownie batter. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable flavors like peanut butter brownie. I love this. And the great thing is you don't only have to order online. You can now go to Walmart. You can get a four bar box, which will include the cookies and cream, the double chocolate, one of my favorites, among others. Or you can go to Sam's Club and get a 13 bar box with the brownie batter that I mentioned and the churro flavor. So make sure you get your built bar on. Uh, you can thank me later. And as I like to say, happy snacking. The Seattle Kraken will be looking to feast in front of the net tonight against the Dallas Stars. I want this win, folks. I want it. Um, if we take a look at the standings, wild card, we're just above the line for the wild card, the Seattle Kraken. We, uh, again, did get that points. We're at 81, but LA, they got an OT point. 
Vegas is on a three-game win streak, so that we're starting to see some separation. Vegas has 88 points, LA 85 points. We've got 81. We still have a better win percentage, though, than Edmonton, though, who's right on our heels. They have 80 points on the season and a 597 win percentage. They lo- they dropped their last game, so uh, they are just one one game in the loss column. So we don't want to bank on them continuing to lose. They've been streaking and trending upwards. We need to win. We need to get as many points as possible. So in the wild card for the West, you've got Edmonton, you've got Colorado and Nashville right there. Now, Colorado is an interesting team because their win percentage higher, but their points at 78. I'm assuming that's, yes, it is, because they have games in hand. So Edmonton played 67. We've played 66. Colorado's only got 64 games. um, Nashville as well. So those are teams to keep an eye out on, especially if we start dipping down into um, the wild card scenario. So just to keep up with that 609 win percentage for Colorado. So we want to keep winning and stay above that line and stay in one of the top three spots in the Pacific division. That's what I'd like to see. All right. I want to take you to these pride jerseys. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about pride. I much like Madison Packer agree. Being able to see yourself represented in a sport like hockey is extremely important. It's been important for me. And although Pride Nights are not something that I think is geared specific to me, and I don't need to see myself in a Pride Night, when we have Black History Nights, that's important. So when I see teams that don't embrace Black History Month, don't embrace Women's History Month, um, that's hurtful. When Especially if they said they were going to do something and then they don't do it. I can relate to that. So I stand in solidarity and hopefully as an ally for the Pride community when they're feeling that teams and leagues like the NHL teams and leagues will say one thing and be glad to take our money but not practice what they preach. And I have not found that to be the case with the Seattle Kraken, and I'm very, if you will, proud of that. So let's talk about these a little bit. Um, We have uh, these amazing jerseys that were designed by a member of the LGBTQ community in Seattle. So Simpson uh, Chathna goes by he, him from Seattle, Washington, has a passion for design and color. I can definitely see that in this design. A Capitol Hill resident, he enjoys finding quiet uh, in Volunteer Park, which is a respite from the hustle and bustle of Capitol Hill. Now you can see the colors of this jerseys, the lettering and the number feature, the progressive pride flag. That is a pride flag that also denotes a a black and brown, as you can see here in this photo. You can also, I'll show you here the letters, but it has the black, the brown, the pink, and the blue. So that's representing the trans community, but then also representing people of color who are in the LGBTQ plus community. So that's what they mean by the progressive pride flag. Um, And here we go. That's exactly what the Seattle Kraken write. They say the progressive pride flag utilizes colors from the traditional pride flag, as well as colors that represent people of color, people who identify as transgender, gender nonconforming, and or undefined. So some details that I really like. You will see the shape of hands here on the crest. And that represents, in Simpsons logo, the, the notion of support, holding communities together. And I love this one, collective impact that we have when we all work together. The hands are also powerful vehicles and symbols for communication. In the secondary logo, uh, Simpson has the hands coming together to form a, sim- a simple heart, a universal expression of love. So I love, I love these jerseys. Here goes the, the, the hands coming together as a heart on the shoulder patch and as part of the anchor logo. I love these. Um, Simpson, great job. If you're going to Climate Pledge Arena, check it out. I think 
last year's designs were fantastic and obviously iconic because it was the first time for our team. I really do think that they've gone in a different direction this year. I see an emphasis on color when it comes to these. Hockey is for everyone. For those listening on audio, I'm using air quotes. I have thoughts, but we'll save that for another time because I do want to celebrate this design. Um, I like it. I dig it. I can't wait for the guys to wear it on war- uh, during warm-ups. Speaking of warm-ups, it's a game day, baby. We're going to have Martin Jones in net. Be good to Martin Jones. Be good to Gruby. I really hope we see Donny Boy in the lineup. Um, I believe Sprong assisted on that. So got some decisions to make. Dave Haxel wants us to stop asking about it. He's like, I understand why you're going to ask, but I'm just letting you know right now, I'm not giving you anything. You'll get it at seven o'clock. Of course, that's seven Pacific time because it's about 740 where I am right now. Uh, Anyway, hold fast, stay true. Hockey is for everyone. Happy Pride. And I will come back tomorrow with a recap of our win against Dallas. All right. Be good to yourselves and to each other. Peace.